What's up, gang? Amanda Nybert here, registered dietitian, trying to catch you as you're sitting in bed, scrolling on Facebook, scrolling on Instagram. I don't know. They say nighttime is a good time to jump on here, and I have been meaning to do this kind of I don't know, maybe not last part. I've got maybe two more parts to this kind of heart health series. Um, this one has been very well requested and that is to talk about cholesterol. Cholesterol, so let's do it. And you know, it's really interesting because my entire um, kind of, I don't know, shift in my nutritional mindset and how I was teaching my clients in a hospital setting began with my own cholesterol story. So let me tell you about it. Um, it was about 12 years ago. I had um, given birth to my daughter. I was about eight months, I don't know, postpartum, post-birth. I don't know what it is. All right, she was eight months old, eight months old. Going into my annual visit and was actually like really excited because I had lost all my baby weight, I was eating a healthy diet, um, I was exercising, and I really kind of expected to get a clean bill of health. And then I was shocked, my doctor was shocked, um, to kind of tell me that my cholesterol was over 300. And she immediately wanted to put me on a statin. And I was like, wait a minute, hold, hold up, how can this be, okay? I'm eating a low fat, low calorie diet. I'm exercising, I'm at a healthy weight. I don't wanna be on a pill for the rest of my life. And so I said, give me six months and let me see if I can kind of rectify this situation on my own. And luckily she said, okay, six months, come back. If it's still high, we'll put you on a statin. And so I left there, you know, very like confused. Um, because she handed me the American Heart Association diet and I'm like, well, that's how I live, you know? I always say I'm like a card-carrying, uh, fat-free ranch and spray butter kind of girl, you know? It was with me at all times. And so I started to do some research and I came across a book called The Cholesterol Myth. And what this book ultimately taught me is that cholesterol is actually an inflammatory response in the body, just kind of like everything is. And if you can reduce inflammation, then you can reduce your cholesterol numbers. And one of the biggest things that drive inflammation in the body is um, sugar and lots of carbohydrates. And what I had found is while I was eating this very low fat diet, I was inadvertently eating a very high sugar, high carb diet. And it was really this imbalance of macronutrients that was creating my um, unhealthy uh, cholesterol numbers. And so, Basically, after reading this, I created a balance within my diet. I started incorporating healthy fats, okay? I started eating eggs, I started eating butter, I started you know, managing my carbohydrates, managing my sugar more, and lo and behold, six months later, I went back and my cholesterol was under 200. And my doctor was like, wow, that's freaking awesome. What did you do? And I said, I did the exact opposite of what you told me to do. Um, and I left there thinking, I cannot continue to promote this low fat, low calorie, no egg, no butter, spray butter, margarine, you know, kind of fake diet when I know for myself that it was not promoting a healthy me. It was not promoting a healthy me. And so I started to do more research and, and what I found is in 1977 when the government came out with the first food guide pyramid, um, prior to that, our obesity rate was low, our heart disease was low, our diabetes was low, you know, the health of the American population was pretty darn good, okay? Um, but from that point on, from the start of the Food Guide Pyramid, nutritional guidelines, from the start of emphasis on low fat, low calorie, you know, before that, there was never really this um, micromanagement of macronutrients. You know, it was just like eat a balanced diet. And uh, from that point forward, our obesity rate skyrocketed. Our diabetes rate skyrocketed. Our heart disease skyrocketed. You know, we are in worse shape than we ever have been, you know, four decades later. Why is that? I don't know. Well, yeah, I know, I know, we all know. 
And really one of the reasons is that imbalance, you know, that heavy focus on one macronutrient versus the other, like low fat, low fat, low fat, eat everything low fat. And manufacturers really ran with that. And what a lot of people don't realize is that all that fat free, low fat crap we were eating was loaded with carbs and sugars. So like, for example, if you look at regular ranch dressing, it has zero grams of carbs and zero grams of sugar. But if you look at fat-free ranch dressing, it has five grams of carbs and five grams of sugar because fat is flavor, sugar is flavor. So if you take all the fat out, you gotta find a way to add the flavor back. And they did it with sugar, with basically sugar, you know, carbohydrates and sugars. And so um, at the time, you know, we currently eat four to five times the amount of carbs and sugars today that we did in 1977. Okay, the rise of obesity. And then we also eat 25% less fat today than we did in 1977. So I always think it's so funny because like the most ironic part about the whole situation is we did exactly what the government told us to do, you know? We did exactly what they said to do to be healthy and it didn't make us healthy. It didn't make us healthy. So um, I think it's really interesting to consider that. And it's, it's really why you know, I aim to show my clients balance. It's, it's, it's like fundamental, you know? Yes, we implement um, strategies like carb cycling where we're doing, you know, low carb days with regular carb days. But so many people right now, you know, in the, the 80s and 90s, everybody was fat phobic, all right? Everybody was fearing of fat. I remember that, that was when I was in high school. And, um, well, the 90s is when I was in high school. And, you know, I remember thinking as long as it was fat free, I could eat as much as I wanted, okay? So it was okay for me to eat a box of Snackwell cookies. Who, who ate Snackwell cookies? Give me a thumbs up, give me a heart. If you love Snackwell cookies, okay? Um, I used to live on like fat free cereal, you know? I remember eating like corn pops and um, what's honeycombs. And, but because they were fat free, I thought that I could eat as much as I wanted because again, it was just this kind of emphasis on fat, you know? Um, and so it's really, it, you know, as you're moving forward with regards to your health and wellness, you have to see everything as balance, all right? You, you've got to find that balance between everything. So, and that's kind of a whole other story. Um, but it kind of brings us to cholesterol, okay? It brings me to cholesterol. And it was that imbalance in my diet when I cut all the fat out, you know, me eating way too many carbs and sugars that actually impacted my cholesterol. Um, so let's talk about cholesterol. You know, the first thing that I wanna mention, and put your questions in the comments. If you're on Facebook, click the watch party right now so that this, this video will head to your friends and family so they can see it. Click the share button, share it now. On, face, on Instagram, you can share the IGTV later, but here's the deal. The, the first thing that I wanna teach you is that cholesterol in food has zero impact in cholesterol in your body, okay? So initially, remember, eggs were bad, all right? Everyone said, don't eat eggs. Eggs are bad for you, they're high in cholesterol. Oh gosh, my, my phone's about to die. Um, so don't eat eggs, you know? Eggs got a really bad rap because they're high in cholesterol. But what we know now is that cholesterol in the food really has zero impact on cholesterol in the body. So that's kind of myth busters number one, all right? Eggs are good for you. Eggs are loaded with choline. Most of us need a lot of that. Eggs are a great source of protein. Um, you know, they fill you up, they keep you full. They've got healthy fats. Egg, I am team eggs, eat all the eggs, you know, find locally produced eggs from quality hens, you know, I'm all about food quality, um, but go get the eggs, that's for sure. Okay, so number one. Number two, total cholesterol is a very flawed lab, okay? First of all, it has to be done in a fasted state, okay? I had a client email me and her numbers were just like all over the place. And I'm like, did you, because it, it was like her numbers, before, like six months earlier, and then her current numbers, they were radically different. And I'm like, were you fasting? And she's like, no, but you know, my doctor said it was okay. And I'm like, no, it's not okay. You need to be that, you have to be fasted, okay? Go into your cholesterol labs, 
fasted, all right, to get the most accurate results. But total cholesterol is, is a very flaw. You cannot look at total cholesterol now and say, oh, your total cholesterol is 300, you need a statin, you know, you need to go on a drug, okay? I highly, I'm not gonna get into statins, but I highly recommend you do your research on that drug before you take it or if you're on it. Um, because most people do not need to be taking that prescription. Um, because high cholesterol is not necessarily bad. Our brain needs cholesterol, our body needs cholesterol. Uh, without adequate, adequate cholesterol, we're not good, okay? More people die of a heart attack with a low cholesterol than they do of high cholesterol, okay? So you can't just look at total cholesterol. So you gotta break down and you gotta look at all, all the parts of total cholesterol. So you have um, your LDLs, you have your HDLs, you have your VLDLs, you have your triglycerides. You know, a lot of people pull the, it's not, it's not cholesterol, but you know, we're also looking at triglycerides when we look at cholesterol labs. Um, so let's kind of break it down. So HDLs are our, um, our cholesterol that we want to be high. H is for high, okay? The higher, the better, all right? Ideally, you want your HDL to be over 60, all right? Aim for that. So here's the deal. I've had a lot of people that did have done my lean program. For example, I have a client and that I'm thinking about. Did my lean program, lost 30 pounds, okay? Is eating better than she ever has been, is exercising better than she ever has been, like in much better shape. Went to the doctor, got her cholesterol done, and her cholesterol was much higher, okay? And of course she contacts me like freaking out, okay? You're gonna, you're gonna email me freaking out, Amanda what did you do to me okay you ruined my cholesterol your whole food nutrition you know healthy eating diet ruined my cholesterol okay and so when we really i was like send me your numbers you know that's if you've said if you said that message to me i'm like send me your numbers i want to see your before i want to see your after we gotta look at them too. and so what happened is is that her hdls had had significantly risen okay had gone up like 50 points i'm like this is good, okay? Your cholesterol went up because your good cholesterol went up. And it was really funny because her doctor didn't even acknowledge that. He's like, oh my God, your cholesterol's gone up. What are you doing? You need to stop doing it. Not even looking at the fact that it was her good cholesterol that went up. Um, so HDL is high, you know, we want that number to be high, okay? Over 60 is, is where we want it to be. Exercise, physical activity, Healthy fats are the best way to increase your HDL, okay? The second lab that I think is most important, okay? Actually, I think this lab is more important than HDL, but the next lab that you really wanna look at is triglycerides, okay? Triglycerides. So triglycerides, um, good is 150, all right? Great is 100, okay? so. If your triglycerides are under 100 and your HDL is over 60, research shows that your opportunity for a heart cardiac event is extremely low, regardless of your total cholesterol number, okay? Regardless of your total cholesterol number. So you really gotta zero in on those two factors, all right? So when you go to the doctor the next time and you're looking at your cholesterol, I want you to focus on what your triglycerides. Now, I've seen people with triglycerides of like 800, 900, like that ain't good. Like that's really bad. When your triglycerides are high, you should be way more concerned than when your um, cholesterol is high, okay? What impacts triglycerides the most? Carbohydrates and sugars. Now, anytime that I say that, people are like, oh, so those low carb people are right. Those keto people are right, you know? I can't have carbs. No, that's not what I'm saying, okay? What I'm saying is, is that excessive amounts of carbohydrates and sugars are what's gonna drive your triglycerides. Not fat, okay? Fat does not negatively impact your triglycerides, okay? If it's in the presence of sugar, yes it will, okay? Yes it will. So here's the deal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask a question, and I ask this question a lot, so I feel like all of you are going to know the answer, but let me know what you think the average American eats in regards to carbohydrates on a daily basis, okay? 
If you consume the standard American diet, how many carbohydrates would you eat? Put it in the comments, okay? Put it in the comments. What's going on here? Okay, good. Um, <laughs> just checking out all the technology. Let me see what you guys got to say. All right, so when we start talking about managing your carbohydrates, we're like, we don't want to be that, okay? We don't want to be that. Okay, here they come. 400, Lois says 400, Jennifer says 450, Krista says 350, at least 500, 500, 350 to 400, 1,000, I love that one, 400 plus, 400 to 500. Okay, so you guys know, I mean, because you listen to me, I say it over and over, yeah. So the average American eats 400 to 500 carbs a day. That is excessive. That is too much, okay? And I know you may be sitting here going, how's that possible, you know? There's no way you can eat that many carbs. Oh, it's possible, okay? You know, drive through, the, drive through the fast food, get a large sweet tea at 75 grams of carbs, add a Big Mac, large fry, there's 250, 300 carbs, and it's just 11 o'clock. We're just getting started, okay? So carbohydrates add up really quickly, okay? So if you're eating the standard American diet, you're eating way too many carbohydrates and sugars. And one of the things that I really try to teach in the lean program is the fact to not fear carbohydrates. So most women can consume 150 to 200 carbs a day and still lose weight and still have healthy triglyceride numbers, okay? Men, 200 to 250, all right? Um, and that's what it's all about. It's about creating that balance, getting out of that all or nothing mindset where you're either doing no carbs or you're doing all the carbs. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so triglycerides. Under 100 is what we're aiming for. 150 is good. Um, HDLs, over 60, okay? That's what we're gonna look at. Now, a lot of times when our triglycer when our cholesterol is high, it is because of our LDLs, okay? So LDL, L for low. We want our LDLs to be low. But it's not that simple, okay? So whenever someone has a high LDL, um, you know, I will usually, again, look at those two numbers. Listen, your HDL is really good. Your triglycerides are really good. You probably don't have much to be concerned about. But if that LDL scares you, you need to get an NMR profile, all right? And that's gonna break down the particle size of your LDL. Okay, because if you have really large, fluffy, big, bounce off the artery wall, LDL, you're good, all right? If you have really small, dense, kind of clogging LDL, that's not good, all right? You need to make some lifestyle adjustments. Um, so this NMR profile will really break that down. The, the volume of small, small, small versus big LDL. And the goal is to have a lot of big, fluffy LDL, okay? So that's what I typically say um, to clients that are still just like, I don't know, very concerned. So take it a step and look at all of those numbers, okay? Um, so when we look at cholesterol, you have to understand it's just, again, it's just kind of one marker. It's not the end all, be all, okay, of like, heart disease, you know, you've got to really look at everything. You've got to look at your blood sugar control. You've got to look at your insulin sensitivity. You've got to look at your, you know, lifestyle factors, your, your activity, your daily activity. You know, I, I talk about smoke I and mean, <laughs> sitting is the new smoking, you know, are you getting up and are you moving around? Um, and, you know, recognize that it's, it's a combination of everything together. So let me know what questions you guys have about cholesterol, um, how to interpret your labs, what you should be looking for, you know, what additional labs that you should ask for. I actually give a resource to all my lean clients and it is my um, suggest should, blah, 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 my suggested annual lab work. And maybe I'll share it with you guys um, as well. But it just kind of runs through just some of the basic labs that you should be following um, and you should be um, getting on, on at least an annual basis to kind of, you know, just check in with your health. Katie asks, what's a good LDL number? Well, like I said, it, that's relative, you know. I mean, we want them to be under 100 um, with LDL, 150. 
Um, but like I said, if it's high, but it's all big fluffy LDL, it's not that, it's not that dangerous. It's not that detrimental. So you really kind of have to go down into the nitty gritty. Um, you know, we can no longer say that, you know, you, your cholesterol needs to be under 200. It's just not that simple. Okay. And P, and again, like I said, um, you know, using drugs that lower cholesterol is, is showing to cause more harm. You know, um, people that use statins are more at risk for diabetes. They're more at risk for kidney issues. Um, you know, again, we need cholesterol in the body. So suppressing cholesterol is not a good thing you know, like we thought it was. Um, so it's always good to, again, do your research and just make sure that, you know, you're well informed before, you know, you just jump the gun over one simple lab. Um, Cassie says, do you recommend a keto diet for better cardiac care? Heck no, I don't, I mean, Cassie, where, did you just join us? <laughs> yeah, it's about balance, you know? Um, if you're eating way too much fat, then again, we need, we need balance. We need carbohydrates. We need fats. We need everything in moderation. Um, you know, I'm not totally opposed to keto, but keto is not a consistent lifestyle. Like the only proper way to keto is you've got to cycle. you got to keto cycle. You know, you do keto for a couple of months, then you got to bring back the carbs. I mean, the body needs carbohydrates. So, um, you know, no. And for me, keto is not sustainable because I like margaritas. And so that drops you right out of ketosis. Um, and I think that a lot of people are doing keto in a really unhealthy way. You know, living on bacon, eggs, and cheese, I just don't think is really good. I mean, I do think that there is, you know, healthy ways to, um, you know, do keto. And then there's unhealthy ways. But I think in the long run, you should be looking for balance for sure. So... All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. Do your research. I will put in the comments um, just your, you know, a lot of people are asking what should your numbers be. I'll throw those in the um, description of this video so you have those to look at. I'll tell you what labs you should be looking at, total cholesterol, triglycerides, NMR profile, you know, get the works. Make sure you're well informed um, when you're looking at those numbers, all right? Focus on balance and, um, you know, do all the things. Do all the things. All right, guys. Happy Wednesday. I don't even know what day it is. All right. I will see you later. Talk to you soon. Bye, guys.